All right. So I said instruction one, psychological levels, which we just did now. And I said psychological levels, uh, one one four three zero 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 one four four zero 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 one four five zero zero zero. Those old numbers. Now, what's the essence of the old number? If you hear that the price of oil gets to, um, let's assume in Nigeria now, petrol, let's assume it's 250. You hear that the price goes to 300. What will you do quickly? If you have bought when it was 250, when it gets to 300, you quickly sell and make money, right? That's a whole number. That's a decision uh, uh, stage. If you hear that it drops, the Naira to dollar exchange rate drops from 7 30 to 600. Oh boy, you quickly buy because you know that it will go back up later on. Do you understand? So those old numbers are where people make decisions from. And now check. Every time you see a big move in the market, it happens at all number at the psychological level. What's this? This is triple top. Every downpour. This is a big buy. It happened at 144 at 134.000 was where this heavy buy happened. 134. This heavy buy here, 132,000 was where it happened. Look at this heavy downpour here, 148,000 was where it happened. This heavy downpour here, 145,000. This heavy downpour, 145. This heavy downpour, 146. Check it. Backtest. Every major move in the market happens at psychological levels. Every major move happens at psychological levels. What it means is, you need to pay attention to psychological levels. That's pretty much what it means. I know there's a news in four minutes, so we'll just check what's happening with our trade, then we'll continue the class. If it hits our stop loss, no problem. If it hits our take profit, no problem. I'm not going to adjust my trade. In fact, I already closed my app so that I will not check it. I don't want to check anything on my app right now. I don't want to see what's going on on my trade. That's what I just did. So that's why I'm here with you. I don't want to know what's going on at all. So when he's uh, in three minutes time, that's... 229. We'll see the market for like two minutes, see what's happening. Then we'll come back here. Instruction one, um, plot out psychological levels, which we have done. Instruction two says what? Tell me in the chat box. Instruction two say, um, sorry, that was the first basic instruction. Now, the first technical instruction is what the trend. God bless you, Deborah. The trend. What time frame am I supposed to check for the trend? What time frame? Four hours. God bless you, Olive. Four hours. I see you, Deborah. I see you, Okuchi. I see you, Odela. I see you. 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 Amazing, amazing. So check for the trend on the four hours. This is the daily chart. So this is not relevant to me right now. I come to the four hour chart. It says check for the trend. So I need to zoom out. For me to know what the trend is, I need to what? I need to zoom out. For me to really know what the trend is, I need to zoom out. Now, the, now you say something. Direction of the larger candles. Wow. There's a bias here because see this heavy large candle. We had a very heavy, heavy candle here. Right? Now, we are seeing series of heavy candles. That is going up. See, well, we had this on every candle up, every candle down, but this every candle, this one every candle, it took two candles for them to cover what happened. All these small, small sales, it took one heavy buy. Small, small sales, one heavy buy. Small, small sales, heavy buys. See, heavy buys, heavy buys. Then now check, come to the recent candles. These are this is what have been happening since. So. So based on structure, let me now show you this part. I didn't include this part in the strategy. But based on structure, I want us to identify higher lows and higher highs. Based on structure, let's identify the lows and the highs. This is a low. OK, no, hold on. Where, where should we pick it from now? Let's pick it from here. Let's just pick it from here. Let's ignore the rest and pick it from here. So this is a low. Is a high. A low, before you can consider something a low, it must have taken out the previous low. 
Before you can consider something a high, it must have taken out the previous high. So where is the next low? This is the next low because it took out this low. Now this is high. This is the next low. Now, this is the next high. No, this high did not take out the, this low. So we can't call this one the high. It didn't take out this low. This low, the high just before the next low was taken out, we can't find. So we are looking for the next high that took out this high, which is this high here. So based on structure, all these are not considered. These ones are called equal tops. That's triple tops. Based on structure, this is called triple tops. Top here, top here, top here. It's called triple top. But this was the high. And now after this high, we see this low, which is a change in trend automatically. Because it was a downtrend. We see an uptrend. We see this high. We see this low. And we have not seen any high. Okay, this high went higher. This low, okay. But now we have not seen any high that took out this high. So right now, we don't have any low or high to consider except this high and this low. If you understand what I just said, drop 777 in the chat. You understand what Coach David just explained to you now. Drop 777 in the chat. I just told you this is the high. This is the low. No high have taken out this high. No low has taken out this low. So this is the only high and low we can consider right now. If you understand, drop 77 in the chat. Okay, I see all the 777. If you don't understand, drop 555 in the chat. Ah, Coach David, me, Borio, I didn't understand what you do sorrow right now. Put 555 in the chat. Oh yeah, let's go, let's go. Energy everywhere. Let's go, let's go. Nobody. Okay, Charles does not understand. Joanne does not understand. Nice one. Let me explain again. Let's delete it. I said, before you can say there is a higher or there's a new low, it means the previous low have been nullified. Look at me very well. It means the previous low have been nullified. And now this, see, we are considering from here, this is a low. This is a high. Now, this low, we are looking for the lowest low right after this high that took out this low. And that is this place, right? Follow me, oh. After this, we are looking for the high that took out this low that we just marked out. I would have picked out this place, but this was not the one that took out this low. I would have picked this place, but this is not the one that picked that took out this low. I would have picked all these small highs that have been created, but that's not what took out this low. Do you understand? Instead, what took out this low is this high. This high, because it formed a new low. If you understand up to this point, those people that said 555, you understand up to this point, put 777 in the chat box right now. Ah, Coach David, I understand what you just said. Put 77. You don't understand. Put 555. What I just explained up to this point. Let me see. Okay, everybody understands. Now let's continue. After this low, we are looking for the high that took out this low. And now we didn't find. Meaning we don't have a new high. Do you understand? And if you don't have a new high, you have to trade inside your range. Hold on. We don't have a new high. We have to trade inside our range. Which range am I talking about? Ah, because David, which range? This range here. This is a range here. This is another range here. This low and this high. You have to tr keep trading inside of it. Since we don't have a new high being created. Hence why we are seeing that every time price came into this high, it sold. Every time it came into this low, it bought. Because a new high has not been formed and a new low has not been formed. Ah, Coach David, I understand this one you just said now. Oh, yeah, put 777 in the chat box. Coach David, this one you just said now. I understand it very well. Put 77. Coach David, what you just said now? Me, Bori, at all. Me, Bori, con, 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 con. I don't understand what you're saying. Put 555. I don't understand. Put 555. I understand. Put 77. Let's see. Let's go. Okay, 77. Everybody, we're on the same page. Nice one. Wise kids. Nice one. We are on the same page. I like this. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Everybody, we are on the same page. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Don't mind me. I'm catching crews, but I'm having fun because you're learning. Now, let's go into the next. Since a new high has not been created, 
our next high is going to be the high that took out this range, which is this place. From this low, the next high we have is this high. Thank you very much. Because that's the next high that took out this low. These are not the highs we are going to consider. Instead, we are going to consider this high on the four hour charts. If you are trading off the four hour charts, it's hard for you to be wrong because the four hour charts gives a clear illustration as to what the market is doing and what the market wants to do. This is the next high. After this high, we are looking for the low that took out this high. This low, yeah. Did it take out this high? No. This low, yeah. It took out this high and formed a new, a new high. This new high. Why did I not pick out this place? Well, you can pick out this place. Not bad. But right after we saw a heavy downpour. As mean this had not happened, this heavy sell had not happened. Sorry, please, you need to zoom in so you can see what I'm explaining to you right now. Or let me pause. So I can spread my chart so you can see what I'm saying. God bless you. Now, this is where we are, remember. Focus, focus, don't lose focus, focus. Stay with me, guys, stay with me. Now, see this low, guys. After this low, we had the high here. But guess what? Because this was the high right after the structure was taken out. As I mean, this heavy sell had not happened, would have picked this as our high. But guys, this heavy sell happened. So we have to pick this, the high before the sell, as our new high. And that sell as our new low because that was a retest of the broken high. Coach David, this one you explained. 100% for you, I understand. Put 777 in that chat box for me. Ah, Coach David, what he said. No go better for you, I don't understand. <laughs> Put 555 in the chat. You don't understand what I just explained. Put 555 in the chat. I want to be sure we are on the same page. Okay, everybody understands. Amazing. Now, on to the next high. Which high went higher than this high? This place here. God bless you. And now on the four hour charts, it doesn't matter whether it's a week or a body. It went above it, it went above it. Unless it was a very long week, then you will ignore. If it's not a very long week, we cannot ignore it. Now, see, after this high, we had a new low formed. And uh, after this low, we have not seen any high, neither have we seen any low. So this is the this is the only high we have and the only low we have. This is the only eye we have. See, guys, follow me, follow me. This is the only eye we have. Yeah. And this is the only low we have to consider right here. Yeah. If you understand what I just explained now, put 777. At least all these ones I've said so far, all the story I've been telling, you understand it very well. Put 777. Let me know that you are with me. Let me know, let me know, let me know. Everybody, let me know. 777, amazing, amazing, amazing. So now we are on the same page. If you don't understand what I just explained, please, I beg you, I'm not going to be offended. Put 555. You don't understand, put 55. Everybody understands, thank you very much. On to the next. Now what's the next? We have to first take out all the noise we have on our chat already. We have created so many noise. This is a noise, I don't need it. This guy is, is not relevant to me on this chart. It's not relevant to me on this chart. It's not relevant to me on this chart. It's not relevant to me on this chart. Now I can zoom in. So currently, we are in an uptrend because the instruction number two says, identify, instruction number one says, identify the trend. Identify the trend on the H4 time frame. So while we are doing that, let's check what's happening with our GBP USD real quick. Let's see what's going on. It has not hit our stop loss. So. Uh, this very ah, uh, what happened? The news did not take e effect. Two fifteen. Okay, news has happened. Self two fifteen was the news. I thought news was two thirty. Oh. Rubbish. We are going to buy. Don't mind them. They are making noise. We are going to buy. Juju is going to buy. Another upcoming news at 4 p.m. I know, I know, I know. I know. We are going to buy. Don't worry. Don't be afraid. Just leave your trade. If he hits our stop loss, like I said, don't be offended. I'm sorry. Means if I can be wrong. 
right? But this is a, a very high possibility for a buy. Now let's go into the charts we are considering. Four hours. God bless you. So now we have these levels marked out and we have known what the trend is. Introduction two says plot a trend line. Mark out support or resistance level closest to where market currently is. And that's what we have marked out, right? Using, okay, using a trend line to connect at least two price points from the beginning of each new swing. Ah, this is a very clear instruction. New Each new swing, each new swing. Remember, a swing is after a new high or low is created. And based on what we did, this was the last, this was high, this was low. So this was the new swing, high, low, high, low, and we don't have a new high, right? So this is the new swing. The rest, we can consider the rest, right? So we can take this out. And now it says draw a trend line. Draw a trend line. Draw a trend what? Draw a what? If I know with me, draw a trend line. Talk to me in the chat box. Draw a trend. Nobody's saying anything. Draw a what? Draw a trend line. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. So now, trend line. This is first, second. We have a third touch on the trend line. The price is currently playing around. One, that's one. Now, from the new swing, because we have identified we are in an uptrend, so we can't be looking for sales right now. At least not now. I know me, I've seen reversal for sale, but we can't look at it structurally because we have not seen it yet. So the new swing, this was the new swing here. One, two, third touch, and we are broken below. Okay. So I can delete this one for the new swing and consider this one. Yeah. This is a trend line, a heavy trend line. This is a heavy trend line. The price is currently doing right now. Right, a very heavy trend line. Now I want to pick. Okay, let me not run ahead of me. Let me follow the instructions on the, on the, on the, uh, on the guide. Let me not run ahead of myself. Instruction three: Draw your Fibonacci. That's what I wanted to do. That I said, let me not run ahead of myself. So it says, go to one hour time frame and draw a Fibonacci from the most recent high to the most recent low in a downtrend, and from the most recent low to the most recent high in an uptrend to determine where the trend will continue. Preferred levels are 61.8% for USD pairs and 79% for JPY pairs. So let's go there now, everybody. One hour chart. One hour chart. One hour chart. Most recent low and most recent high. Remember this most recent high, this most recent low. So we'll draw Fibonacci from the most recent high to the most recent low. Okay, this this was for this. Okay, most recent high, most recent low. This was where price picked up. Remember, I said JPY pay seventy nine. Price came to seventy nine before it moved. So now let's let's do for the buy because we are expecting a buy rather. So most recent low, the most recent high. This was the most recent low, most recent high. So price is on seventy point five. We need price into seventy nine percent. So now, follow me, everybody. Follow me, guys. Follow me, follow me, follow me. Price is coming into 79% Fibonacci level. That's what price is doing. Coming into it. Next instruction says, identify other block. Go to M15 charts and locate previous other block that lie within your marked out points of interest. Other block must be above liquidity or equal height in a downtrend and below liquidity or equal lows in an uptrend. So go to M15 charts. That's what the, the instruction says. M15 charts, and it says look for other blocks. So you are looking for another block that is around this level, right? Around 79. You're looking for an other block that is around that 79%. Okay, so I, I think this is pretty much very simple and straightforward. Other block that is inside 79%. This is very straightforward, guys. This 
this is other block. Now it says equal lows or equal highs. Liquidity, see liquidity here. This is a low, this is a low, this is a low. All these lows are, we can call them equal lows, all this level. And our other block, see all this place, these are lows, low, 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 all these levels here. This other block was valid because this was the liquidity. This and this were liquidity. This other block was valid for this buy. Now we're looking for a new other block that is valid for the buy on 79%. Hence why all these are liquidity. So we are expecting price to take them away and then start buying from our 79% Fibonacci level. So all this I will not consider because these are liquidity. So I'm looking for price levels below this liquidity. Remember, look for other block. We have seen the other block already, this guy here. All right? So I'll draw it from this place. I will not consider this week because it's close to the liquidity zone. Instead, I'll consider the body all the way down because it's uh, around my 79% Fibonacci level. I'll consider it all the way to the lowest point of the week. So this week here, lowest point of this week is what I'm considering, all of this level. So we're expecting price to come into this level and buy. All right, it tapped the trend line and it bought, but we need price to just rally properly into it and then we see the heavy buy. All right, it's not going to buy completely right here. It's too, if it buys here, I'll cry. I'll cry actually. So we need price to come into this place and then we would buy price all the way up. And now buying price here, we are going to keep our stop loss. Ah, Coach David, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me. I'm buying around this level. My take profit, hopefully. Um, because we don't know if the new high will be taken away. So my take profit is going to be um at the at the high. This high that we marked out. I don't know if it will be taken away, like I said. So I'll keep my take profit at that high. Or let's say, let's assume if we take it away, I'll would, I'll would take profit at minus 27 Fibonacci. That is if price takes it away. If price does not take it away, I'm not the owner of the market. I can't, I can't, I can't judge. But if price takes it away. I would like to take profit around that level. Then honestly speaking, based on structure, I'll keep my stop loss below this low, which is 35 pips. 35 pips stop loss. It's below this low because if price comes into this low, it means it's not going to buy. So I'll keep my stop loss there, my take profit there. That's one to four percent. That's one to four risk to reward. Very good. Now look at it. Stop loss must be kept below the major price level that is lower than your point of interest in an uptrend. Major price level. I said, these are points of interest. This is the major price level. Stop loss must be kept below it. Okay? And above major price level that is higher than your point of interest in an uptrend. Now, entry criteria and trade management. Pay attention. Okay, if, if you understand up to where I am right now, drop 777. Drop 777. If you don't understand what I've explained so far, before I proceed, drop 555. You don't understand. Ah, Coach Dave, you don't necessarily don't understand. Drop 555. You understand? Drop 777. At least so far, what I've explained. You got lost at other blocks. Thank you. I don't understand how to determine other blocks. Thank you. I, I like that you are specific. What don't you understand? Let me explain again. Please explain what another block really is in a layman's term. Thank you. What again? What again? Joan, other block also. Okay, you guys don't understand the other block part. Let me explain the other block part. So, other block, other block is the last um, opposing pressure before an impulsive move. Pay attention. Other blocks are the last opposing pressure before an impulsive move. The last opposing pressure before an impulsive move is called an other block. So we saw this by, 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 took out this level, and then we saw this opposing pressure. But this is not the last opposing pressure. The last opposing pressure was that last can do before this heavy buy started. Here also the last can do before this heavy buy. Here also the last can do before this heavy buy. So the last oppose oh, you, you can have thousands of other blocks on the charts. That's fine. But you can't consider thousands of other blocks on the charts. That's that's not wise. 
So the last opposing pressure before an impulsive move. But now, if there is liquidity below that opposing pressure in your buy, price is going to take out your other block. Are you guys listening? If there is liquidity below your buy position, that buy other block you are considering, like now, this is another block, but now see liquidity, liquidity here, liquidity here. Obviously, price will take it away. This is not considered. See liquidity here, see liquidity here. Wait for price to take away the liquidity and come into your other block, like we saw here. This other block, price came into it after taking away liquidity, hence why we saw this heavy buy. So other blocks are the last sell can do before the heavy buy momentum started or the last buy can do before the heavy sell momentum started. And now guess what? It must be below liquidity for a buy or above liquidity for a sell. Meaning, uh, meaning like now this is liquidity here. This is what we call trend line liquidity. Trend line what? Trend line liquidity. So this... And this is another block here. Look at this. This is another block here. But now, this other block we not hold. Ask me why. Because we have another liquidity above here. See liquidity here also. Price will take away this liquidity by coming up into this zone. Hence why we are trying to buy price into claim all those liquidity. But this is another block that when price gets it, fall for a while, maybe into this level before it continues, but it's going to continue, but it's going to fall for a while first at this other block because it has taken away the trend line liquidity. So other blocks are the last bearish momentum before a heavy bullish pressure or last bearish pressure before a heavy bullish momentum or last bearish uh, a bullish pressure before a heavy bearish momentum. Vice versa, other blocks, the last buy can do before the heavy sell or the last sell can do before the heavy buy. But it must be below liquidity before it is valid. You can know other blocks, but no, but not know the valid other block, because you are considering any and every other block. If you understand what Coach David just explained now about other blocks, drop seven seven seven. Ah, Coach David, honestly, I don't understand what you just explained now about other blocks. Please put five five five. Please, I beg you, put five five five. Ah, Coach David, honestly, I don't understand though. Honestly. Don't worry. I'm sorry that I will make you go back, but please, I don't understand. Who five five five? Because David, I understand. Who seven seven seven? All of you guys understand. Amazing. I love you with all my heart. I love you very very well. So someone said, "What's the difference between other block and a zone?" God bless you. An other block is a candle. A zone is many candles together at a level, a price point. So now this is a zone. For example, this other block now. This is, see, okay, hold on. This is the other block here. But this is the zone here. Because there's still some pressure up to this previous candle. So this is a zone. This is a zone, but this small place here is the other block. Same with this, our chart here. Same with our chart. This is the other block here. Let me show you. This is the other block here. This can't do alone. But now I don't want to pick this other block alone. I want to pick the old zone. Hence why I said this is the zone. Now the zone, because it has other confluences. What are the confluences? Trend line is on the zone. Fibonacci, 79% is on the zone. Other block is on the zone. Now look at it. 144.400. This is a psychological level also. And it's on the zone. So you have many conferences in that zone, hence why that is a zone. But another block is only one. You have only one conference for another block. For a zone, you have multiple conferences. Do you understand what I explained now, Mr. Charles? Uh, Mr. Charles? Do you understand? Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes or no? Quickly, quickly, quickly. Mr. Charles, do you understand what I just explained now? Yes, amazing. Amazing. So now we have picked our preferred entry points. This is how I analyze the, the chart every time I, I come and give you a signal. That's why uh, the likelihood of losing the trade is very low. It's hard for you to lose the trade if I call the trade out. I'm not saying you cannot lose. You can lose. I'm not always right. But at least this strategy I just gave you now is more than 85% accurate. Yesterday, I did not use this strategy to chart. 
I was using simple uh, retest strategy. That's why we lost a lot yesterday. Ah, I lost four trades in a row. I wanted to cry. Because I was just waiting for retest. So I was only using Fibonacci. Only Fibonacci, nothing else. I don't use any other conference. Only Fibonacci. Yesterday, only Fibonacci. And it's not good. So I knew why I made you guys lose yesterday. It was my stingy self thinking, let's use Fibonacci and support and resistance. The one I gave you in the night yesterday, I was using support and resistance. I went for watch out. I saw a four hour support. I just okay, this this should hold. This should hold. Who tell you? Who tell you say you go hold? That's how I, I made you guys lose money. That's how I'm apologizing. I'm really sorry because now I mean fuck up. All right. Every time I analyze charts properly like this, we hardly lose. Hardly lose. So let's go to the next instruction. Entry criteria. Entry criteria and trade management. Execute your trade after you see at least one major weak rejection or two minor weak rejections around the Fibonacci levels closest to your point of interest. Execute. After you see one major weak rejection or two minor weak rejections, which means you need to wait for a confirmation. Don't just enter when it comes into your zone. Around the Fibonacci levels closest to any of your points of interest. So this is a Fibonacci level, 70.5. And guess what? We saw a weak rejection. That's indecision candle form there. Ah, Angie, how are you doing? Ah, longest time, longest time. Ah, Angie, good to see you again. So this was this was weak rejection. And we say, and this is a minor weak rejection. We say a major weak rejection around the Fibonacci. But the Fibonacci, I like to consider here is 79. So when price comes anywhere inside this zone, I'll be I'll be ready to go in. But now, because not, not all of you can stay and be looking at the charts. That is why I always tell you guys to set pending order. And I'll give you large stop loss. Remember, if I give you pending order, I'll always give you larger stop loss. If I mention this thing by myself, I'll put my stop loss here, honestly speaking. That's a 300. And then if I'm taking out, I'll wait for it to come down here to 200 and I'll enter again. But I can't tell you to do that. So I, that, that I just gave you 35 pips stop loss. We don't express price to go all the way there. If it goes there, then there's a problem. You understand? So uh, price is coming into our level and we are looking to buy. What's our buy levels? That's 144,430 and above. And be, and below rather. 144,430 and below is where we are looking at. Hold on, guys. Let me send it to you guys. So our entry for Euro JPY is uh one four four point four thirty. Stop loss is uh let me amend everything now. Stop loss is uh zero eighty. Take profit is uh eight hundred. So that is one four four point uh four thirty. Uh, one four four point zero eighty. Euro JPY. Buy. Entry. One four four point four thirty. Stop loss. One four four point zero eighty. That's uh, thirty five pips. 
Tipi. 800, right? That's uh, how many pips? 137 pips. 145.800. 145.800. One thirty seven pips. Use proper risk management. So I've sent it to you guys. All right. The entry, the stop loss, the tip, take profits. Use proper risk management. Proper risk management. Proper risk management. I beg you. Proper risk management. So we have seen the entry criteria. Uh, now let's look for the other end. The other end, uh, the last instruction says exit criteria. In cases where the trade does not hit take profit level, this is important. Pay attention, I beg you. In cases where the trade does not hit take profit level, exit your trade after you see at least one major weak rejection or two minor weak rejections around the psychological levels or support and resistance levels while your trade is running. If not, hold your trade to final TP. Let me now show you and help you mark out the levels I'm referring to. Should we set buy limit now? Yes, please. Go ahead. Now, what are the support levels? This is a strong support level. Because we have a lot of weeks touching it. So anywhere inside this box that I see price rejecting, once I see rejections, heavy rejections, I can exit here one. Or if I see every rejection at 145000 because the psychological level, I can exit here also, two. Where else can I exit? I can also exit if I see price around this level making some funny rejections. I can also exit. Anywhere in these three places, I can exit. I must not exit before these three places because price will come into those places. One, two, three. Anywhere here. I can take profit. If I don't see price doing that, I'll wait for the final take profit level. Do you understand what I'm saying? Which means if you are losing or you are not holding your trade to final TP, you are indisciplined. Look at the only way you can be wrong. And look at it. Our first TP self is even 60 pips. 60 pips on 35 pips SL. That's almost one to two. Almost one to two. So you, you should be in profit. EJ already got there. He didn't get there, sir. See? It didn't get to, if it got there, this thing would activate. It didn't get there. Our entry is 430. You go to 438. You didn't get there, sir. You didn't get there. Unless you entered, you didn't, you didn't get there. I like entry on the new candle open. And this is three o'clock. New candle has opened. So I, I can enter from now. This is one thing I didn't include in the strategy, but I like doing. I like entering when new candle wants to open. Because that's a clearer guide. I want to see what the new candle wants to pump up. Because when new candle opens, it starts with momentum. At least the first 20, 30 minutes of that candle comes with heavy momentum. Then the last 10 minutes of a candle has heavy momentum. You can confirm what I just said now. The first 20, 30 minutes, this is first 20, the first 30 minutes, 15 minutes candles, two, one, two, heavy momentum. Last 10 minutes, see, this last one, momentum. See, just check it. You always have first 30 minutes, every momentum, last 10 minutes, every momentum. So I think uh, what I just explained now is a good enough guide for you. This trade, you must not exist before 145. It's going to give us at least 60 pips, at least. So start thinking of your lot size, though. Ah, 10 pips, uh, 10 standard lots now. That's going to give me $6,000. At least, if I lose, I will lose three thousand five hundred. Am I willing to lose three thousand five hundred? Ah, no. But I'm willing to lose one thousand. Uh, 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 let's say ah, I'm willing to lose one thousand seven fifty. Okay, so I can use five lot size. So instead of putting five lot size all in one place, let me put two lot size here. I put another two lot size. 
Yeah, at the lowest point, I put down that two losses at the 10.6 in case it keeps coming down. That way, I'm even giving myself more opportunities to take more trades and risk less because that, that way I will not lose 1,750 if it goes against me. That way I will lose only like maybe 1,300 or 1,200 if it goes against me. Do you understand? That's the psychology of success in trading. It's called scaling in and scaling out. So price just got there. I just clicked my own buy now. Um, me, yeah, I didn't do market, I didn't do buy limits, market execution. I'm in already. I am in. Don't go in with too much lot size. Remember, just be careful. Don't be a papa game markets. Just be be very careful. Don't fight these markets. All right. I am in already, Sha. I hope you are in also. I just hope you are in also. If you are in this trade, drop 777. If you are in, or instead of 777, drop, uh, drop, uh, okay, 777, just drop it. You are in the trade already, drop 777. I'm in, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. Amazing. 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 So I can end the recording. I'll share with you guys so that you can take advantage of how I analyze the market using Atom's money trap. So I'll upload it on YouTube. I'll let everybody access it for free. Just this particular recording. I'll, I'll make it public so you can access it for free.